protecting. Third one, different. Different from either of the two. Middling, protecting. Here in protecting is at first and foremost noticeable because people are experienced if you're protecting as a little bit more distant, critical, aloof, even arrogant. Even arrogant. Now it's not so much that you identify with being arrogant and you may not even feel arrogant but you might be experienced as being arrogant. You see if this is if this is the will over here, the hands that have to work, if this is the heart that feels, this is the head. This is the thinking part of ourselves and though this part we use our head to make the world a better a safer place and we become intellectually really agile and smart and we hone that aspect of ourselves thinking that we'll create more safety for ourselves in the world if we can just know more, get more researched, get more informed. I don't know whether you can identify with that, I certainly can. I sometimes think the whole reason I did my postgraduate study was because I felt fundamentally inadequate without it. Isn't that like it's a terrible admission? But the reality is, I, I, but I have to say, having said that, now it comes rushing into my mind all the dozens of managers I've spoken to who have said they've got MBAs because how could I enter into the business world without an MBA, you know? Only to find that when they got it, it was a rather disappointing experience, you know? And um, so, the, uh, not all of them find that, of course. Prote here, we want to know the answer and we get safe if we're more knowledgeable and we tend to be a little bit more distant. I always find it interesting. In a circle like this, not that you can move your chair so easily, but those who are in protecting, those in, when I set up chairs, often when I'm working with groups, they'll come in and I have chairs in a sort of a loop or a chair, whatever, and the protectors will open the door, the, the door, they'll open the door to come into the room and they see the chairs and there's no desk. They literally open the door and go, oh shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a terrible thing to have to sit in a circle like this. It's not, so they'll sit down and the first thing they'll do, I love them for this, is they'll just push their chair back about 18 inches. There's the thing, and there's me just a little further back. Now I'm feeling a little more comfortable here. They just want a bit of distance. Now, this is their gifting, by the way. Their gifting is to have insight. They really are smart. It's not just that they're having themselves on. They are smart, and they have insight. And the distance they create is in service of the insight they have. So that, as in the other two, they have a rich gifting. But can they, are they using their gifting? When we're in service of their fears, of ameliorating their fears, you see, the fear in the protecting is to be vulnerable, is to, to have someone want to come and tamper with them, to interfere with them. So the protector, those of us who experience protecting, and while I must admit I thought of myself as complying for years, the reality is underneath the compliant person in me was a big time protector. I, actual fact, I'm way back inside and as nice as I might appear to you, inside I'm judging the hell out of you. <laughs> that's, I realise that's who I was inside. I'm shaking your hand going, it's lovely to meet you, lovely to meet you. And literally there'll be a voice in my head going, ah, oh, he's going nowhere. And uh, well, you know what I mean? Like devastating judgment. Okay, it's this protecting thing and I'll make judgment because the protector is like that making judgment of everyone and everything. And when the protector goes full blow, blown, we become quite critical, distant, arrogant, cynical. They're the ones that walk out of the meeting and go, what a load of bullshit that was, you know. Uh, and they may have good reasons why it was, but they don't want to say in the meeting because that's actually a bit too vulnerable and it's a bit too much and it identifies them too clearly and it brings them into the circle too much. Does that make sense? So they've got lots of insight and they're probably right, but it, their giftings aren't being, uh, don't benefit the group. What they're using their giftings for is to give themselves more distance and experience as arrogant, separate, cynical, aloof, critical, yeah, overly intellectual sometimes, yeah, all of that. I do quite a lot of work in the universities and uh, oh my Lord, <laughs> quite a lot of protecting, a lot of protecting. I love them, I love them. I remember once when I ran a full day training program 
and um, in teaching facilitation skills at one of the big universities in town. And they came in and they all came in and their chairs were like this. But interestingly, I noticed that most of the chairs were about three feet from each other. So they just separated their chairs all from each other. The group was clearly predominantly protectors. And, uh, and I was teaching and doing things for the first hour and a half. And inside I was wondering, is this, is this landing? I wasn't teaching this material, it was how to facilitate because they wanted to make their, their courses, especially in their postgraduate courses, more engaging. So I was teaching facilitation skills. And, uh, and I was teaching this and that and the other, but inside I was wondering, is this even landing? these like this? Do they like it? Do they think it's all nonsense? You know, and, uh, and I, I don't know, they're all highly educated people, of course. But it was interesting, I went to morning tea and there was at least three of them who came over to me as individuals and said, excuse me, uh, Paul, it's so helpful what you're talking about. Thank you so much. This is quite extraordinary material, isn't it? You know what I mean? Come over to me one-on-one -on -one just to let me know. Then they'd go back to their chair, <laughs> not talk to anyone really, and sit and wait for the next little instalment. You know what I mean? It was so, it was extraordinary. I loved them. I loved this group. I just came to love their energy um, because they were really deeply thinking people. They were making all sorts of connections. Um, um, but uh, it did trigger me as someone who has some sort of compliance because I really thought they were just disapproving, finding me inadequate. I rolled out the notion that I have a PhD as like some weird, completely transparent attempt to gain legitimacy. They must have just been laughing their heads off. They've seen people do that every day, somehow gain legitimacy. You know what I mean? It was just like, it was embarrassing. Um, to do that, but the reality is I was still in fear of them rejecting me, than my compliance self, and they were really academics, way done way more work in that, in that environment than I ever have. So this is protecting. If you work for a protector manager, then you might find it hard to find them sometimes even. <laughs> Where are they? You know what I mean? <laughs> They're out, you know, they'll be somewhere. Um, they, this is, the protecting manager is not your open door policy kind of guy. He's not that, he's not that. But if you sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, you might be surprised at how much they're able to be with you and share with you. Interestingly, my experience is, this group is amongst the most sensitive of all. It's, they're, it, they're so sensitive, in fact, that's why it's so difficult to be in an intimate group like that. Their sensitivities are so great. So we might, we're surprised by the experience and the, of being with them because, um, and, and where do they migrate to by the way, just finally? They migrate straight up here. You see their intellectual giftings are right up here and they are migrate to the systems awareness, authenticity, self-awareness. That is they bring their awareness and their intellectual insight and their understanding into the room to talk about it. They can courageously raise threatening topics. Instead of cynically noting it and talking, and talking about outside the room, they raise it vulnerably inside the room. That's the difference, isn't it? That's that gifting brought in, that's the gifting brought into this level of adult development. Oh, and by the way, all the same correlations apply for protecting. It's inversely correlated to leadership, it's inversely correlated to business results. It's inversely correlated to these creative competencies. Statistically inversely correlated. The more we have of this, the harder it is for us to be up here.